Hey guys, this is Kevin with Weld White and Blue. Today we're going to be going over the Hulk tubing roller and how to properly adjust and set up the roll dies so that you get good straight rolls every time. We're also going to be going over a few of the things that we put on here to make life a little bit easier and how to really get dependable and accurate bends every time and how to accomplish that. We're also going to be going over how to roll 20 foot material by yourself because it's always helpful to have a second hand, but when that rolls over on you and messes up all the adjustments you just did, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video. And also stay tuned to the end for a quick walk around of our power drive setup that we put on this thing. What we're gonna do first is put this idle roller into the frame and measure the distance on either side. We want this distance to be equal on this side and that side so that when you put the tubing in, it rolls straight and doesn't have the corkscrew effect with one being off a little bit and getting that corkscrew effect as you roll it. To do this, we're gonna use a caliper and measure the distance on either side to make sure it's accurate and it's all both the same. I already did this, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one up. Then you're gonna repeat it on the other side. To do this, we're gonna use a caliper and measure the distance on either side to make sure it's accurate and it's all both the same. I already did this, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one up. Then you're gonna repeat it on the other side. To do this, we're gonna use a caliper and measure the distance on either side to make sure it's accurate and it's all both the same. I already did this, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one up. Then you're going to repeat it on the other side. Now another important part to making sure that these dies stay aligned is to make sure that this bolt is tight. It doesn't have anything to hold on to on the other side, so getting this bolt is tight is a little bit tricky. But it's important that you make sure that it's tight because if it's not and it comes loose, see that slop in there? That will lead to a corkscrew effect. So make sure that these are tight. Now one of the things you have to do to make sure that your tubing is staying straight is having a reference point. A lot of times, if you're using tuber pipe that has a seam in it, you can just use the seam if that's the way that you want it to be when you're rolling it as the dead top or the dead bottom of what you're rolling. But here we have some stainless that doesn't have a seam that we can see. And we're just gonna cut a little slice of tape, and put it on top so that we have a reference point as to what exactly is dead top on both ends. It doesn't matter so much with square or diamond, but on tube and pipe, it definitely does. And it also doesn't matter so much when you're have a really hard bend in it because then you'll be able to see an eye up what is which way it's rolling. One of the problems with working with long 20 foot lengths by yourself is that when you have it sticking all the way out one end and you need to put it up against the template that you're trying to match. You come over here, you undo it, the whole thing with the bend in it facing up rolls over and hits the ground. So it doesn't only damage your material, but it also throws your rollers out of whack. So one thing that we do around here to avoid that is when it's facing all the way out, just bring it halfway back in. That way it's more manageable. You can hold on to yourself. You can release it, bring it up. Then you're grabbing it from the middle rather than at the very end trying to control this 20 foot piece. You only have 10 feet on either side. Putting it back in is a little bit easier than taking it out. So sometimes you can stick it in there and have it hold itself while you come over here and put pressure down on it. But if not, just put it in halfway again, tighten it down so that you won't have 10 foot on either side so it's still manageable. Put the pressure down and you're good to go. Now it might be a little bit more tedious if you're rolling this by hand to have it sticking all the way out and then bring it all the way back into the middle so that you can grab it. But we think that if you're cranking it by hand, it's actually gonna be quicker than having to reset up these dies every time if it does roll over on you and you don't catch it in time. So one of the things we love about this tubing roller is the digital readout. It's come in super handy with us repeating 
different radiuses that we're doing. Right now we have a toe kick job that we're doing. There's 10 pieces, nine or 10 pieces, and they're all just about the same, but they're a little bit different. So we actually had to go out there and template this in field with cardboard. So what we do now, the first one took the longest. The first one we had to put it in, crank it down, roll it, take it out, check it. All right, need a little bit more. Put it in, crank it down, roll it, take it out, check it. So we did that, took a little bit longer than the rest, but that gave us our baseline of where we were, where we were rolling at. Because every time we rolled it, we wrote down the measurements as to where we were. That way, when number one is right where it has to be, we take that tube, put it away, bring in template number two, take that first number one pipe, put it on template number two. Okay, it needs to be a little bit more of a radius. Well, we know that number one was rolled to 2.201. Well, that can be our base starting line instead of having to take it out and redo it and eyeball it up and all this other stuff. We can just go ahead and crank it down to 2.201 and then that's our baseline. So it has to be a little bit tight of a radius. Well, we can go 2.25 or 2.28, roll it, take it out, check it. Okay, we documented that one. That way, after we get the first one and the second one and the third one, we can just find, you know, when we put template number four up, we can take, oh, number three mm, doesn't quite fit. Number two is the one that fits pretty close to this. Well, we come over here, Number two, we know we wrote it to this. Well, that gives us our starting point for template number four. So it's really awesome if you're doing repeatable and templates that are almost the same. We plan on taking these and putting them in a notepad. That way we have a reference point every time we have to go back because we usually deal with, you know, almost the same size tube all the time. That way we can go back and say, oh, eighth inch wall, inch and a half stainless tube, well, this radius was this. Well, you know what? Now we can go back and we can crank it down and have a starting point for what we're looking for. Or in case, you know, if you do production pieces and you do five or 20 or 50 of the same pieces, well, the customer comes back and they order 10 more of them, you know exactly where to start. That way you're not trying to get a zero mark every time. So it's really helpful, super handy, and it's awesome that they put it on here. Thanks, Swag Off-Road. So one of the things that we added to this Hulk roller are these little guides on the side. Now, these just clamp on with clamps, but these are used in conjunction with a power roller. A power roller, when you let go of the pedal and it turns off, it's not instantaneously stop. It winds itself down. So we know that when we're rolling, as soon as the end of the pipe gets right here at, the, at this gauge, or that gauge, we know to let off because it needs all this space to wind itself down in order to stop before it jumps over this roller. So as promised, this is the walk around video of our Hulk tubing roller setup. 
Um, obviously, we have the Hulk roller right there. The power threading unit is actually a rigid 400 pipe threader that we mounted to the base. The base is two 12 by 79 I-beams that we welded together. They were left over from a job. We wanted to make this base heavy so that we could have 20 foot of stick out on one end and not have to worry about it falling over or tipping over um, without having to bolt it down to anything or have any legs that swing out or anything like that. Um, we added a couple spots to put the dies there. We have a little bit of storage in the front for the stuff and accessories that we don't use. Um, this is actually hooked up to a foot switch that goes in line with the power threader. So all we have to do is step on that foot switch and the unit turns on and off. So it's a, it's a momentary switch, so we don't have to worry about it being constant on or constant off. Um, we have a couple spots over here to hold the bearings, some more dry rollers, um, some keyway shafts and stuff like that in that little piece of channel. Um, we modified it a little bit. We put a, uh, we got a nice little hexagon stainless bar that we put onto the end of the jack handle to make it work. Um, we drilled and tapped everything into the frame. Um, one of the things we did here for this drive shaft setup is that it has to articulate as you go up and down. You have to have universal joints on either end and it has to be able to slide. So instead of getting a PTO unit or using universal joints and trying to make that work, we actually took, just took an inch and a half pipe and we bought a steering shaft from an F-150 and we welded it on to the existing shaft that came with the Swag Off-Road tu uh, tubing roller. So that way it can, as it goes up and down, it can articulate with these universal joints and it can slide in and out with that. So I think the whole setup cost us, we had the, we had the tubing uh, with the pipe threader and I think the drive shaft was 50 bucks. We had the rest of the stuff laying around the shop. Um, the digital readout is nice. It's actually really awesome. One of the things that we did is we put it on a little magnet stand. That way, if you're rolling from either side, you can actually just turn it however you want. Or if you knock it with your piece of material, it just comes right off. So you don't have to worry about breaking it. It's pretty tough. Um, we really like the fact that it stays on all the time. It doesn't turn off automatically, which is really nice when you're jockeying stuff around, you come back, you don't have to turn it back on and you know, if it resets itself to zero or it's just a pain to turn it on and off. So, but yeah, the whole setup, the whole base with the setup weighs about 840 to 850 pounds. Um, yeah, super, super happy with it. We're using the Delrin dies from the, from Swag Off Road right now so that we don't mar the uh, brush finish on the stainless. But we are super impressed with this setup. Really, really happy. Um, it's a big upgrade from what we had before with the Harbor Freight tubing roller. We broke that thing about four or five times and then this job came along. We needed it to be repeatable. We needed it to be accurate. So this was just the clear choice rather than spending, you know, five, six thousand dollars on a other tubing roller setup. We decided to go with this one for a fifth of the price. I think this was we got this on Black Friday special for about 900 bucks. So it's great. We love it. Thanks Swag Off-Road for making it all an awesome piece of machinery. And uh, we look forward to making some more money with it. So that about wraps it up for this video on the Hulk tubing roller from Swag Off-Road. If you guys like this video, hit subscribe, share it with your friends, smash the like button. But I'm Kevin from Weld White and Blue, and thanks for watching.